first decade of the 21st century is remembered as a time of corruption, scandal, and excess. The United States stood on the precipice of a new kind of corporate fascism. Large corporations such as Walmart, Lockheed Martin, and Massachusetts-based Raytheon had become the brokers of political power in Washington. But outside the buzz of million-dollar lunches and pundits of the status quo, one man's unorthodox courage in a time of national crisis created a vibration that shook the foundations of the old order. The tools of destruction, the bombs, the aircraft, the guns, had all become the primary exports of the American empire. And at the same time, you had this enormous centralized government, which was completely out of control. It was obsessed with secrecy, it was violent towards others, disdainful of existing laws, and the future looked bleak. No more free speech, no right to a fair trial, no right to personal privacy, and very, very few politicians spoke out. No one knew much about Kucinich. We knew Clinton, of course, and Obama. The women went crazy for Obama. But you could smell the blood on his hands. Clinton, too. She was a killer, and we were sick of the blood. Now we have problems in Afghanistan. We have problems in Iran. We have problems in North Korea. Well, it sounds like you think Hillary Clinton has sold her soul to corporate interests and the neocons. I'm not going to get into whose soul belongs to whom, but I will say this, and I'll say it again. When it comes to international policy, there is no difference between Hillary Clinton and George Bush. That is a fact, and that's going to be one of the issues down the home stretch. It wasn't what these people had done. It was what we all knew they were going to do. If we have actionable intelligence about high-value terrorist targets and President Musharraf will not act, we will. Congressman Dennis Kucinich seemed unlikely to make much of a mark in the 2008 presidential campaign. His message of peace and justice, while popular with the majority of voters, had been dissipated by media neglect and a public obsession with the cult of celebrity. This is one of the most popular top stories at CNN.com. The brutal reviews of Britney Spears' performance on the VMAs are still coming in. These experts on TV kept saying, Kucinich can't win. He can't win. It was like part of his name. The more I heard that, the more angry I became. I asked my parents, why can't Dennis win? They looked at each other for a long time. Then I saw something shift in my father. He can, my father said, he can. January 2008, Vice President Dick Cheney convinces lame duck President George W. Bush to order a surprise attack on unconfirmed nuclear facilities near Brishair on the Persian Gulf Coast of Iran. One day later, Iran strikes back. A sleeper cell explodes a low-yield nuclear bomb near Long Beach, California killing 10,000 Americans, injuring 100,000 more. The stock market crashes. Democratic candidates Clinton and Obama immediately declare their support for the chief executive. President George W. Bush signs Executive Order 1938, declaring martial law and delaying the national election until August 2009. We thought it was over. All of us. We thought that the American experiment had failed. When the two front-running politicians threw in their lot with the White House, they made a fatal blunder. They exposed what I believe to have been the key weakness in the pre pax United States, a lack of imagination. Our leaders had simply run out of ideas. Even when it had become clear that military force would never solve America's problems, they continued to endorse the path of violence. As police and National Guard begin confiscating firearms in neighborhoods all over the East and West Coasts, candidate Kucinich surprises the nation. Broadcasting on the internet and low-power AM radio stations, 
He declares Bush's power grab illegal and urges the public to rally against Washington. I believe that it is possible to stand for these principles, that you don't have to sell out, that you can take a stand, that you can be courageous, that you can speak the truth, and that you can win. And you're the ones who make that determination. And if you believe, as I believe, that this country hasn't even tapped a, a fraction of the potential it has to, to achieve, the, to reflect the goodness of who we are, then, then organize with us, join with us. Millions respond with courage that none in the White House had anticipated. Wow, we had this uh, we had this little AM radio at the time, and then all of a sudden there's this little guy, Kucinich, telling us he's not buying all this nonsense about declaring war on the whole world. Next thing you know, I'm downtown setting up voting booths and uh, having secret meetings with neighbors I'd never even met before. He brought us together. We were pissed. Rebels organize an unofficial Democratic convention in Dubuque, Iowa. Millions surround the convention, facing off against National Guard troops, tanks, and police. But at about midnight, General Tommy Franks, a veteran of the failed Iraq invasion, joins the rebellious citizens. The troops pull back. By morning, the standoff is over. Kucinich accepts the party nomination. got ugly real fast. First you had the government sending out Blackwater thugs to harass the Kucinich campaign team. Then Clinton's crew. Gene Obama hired some high-powered ad firms to spread a lot of lies and confuse the movement. But a couple of bloggers traced the smear campaign back to them. They got stopped in their tracks. In Oregon, 20 protesters are killed when one man lobs a flaming bottle at police. Fifty people die near Bunker Hill in Boston. Tension mounts. My mother says everything changed when a TV celebrity got killed. Nobody even knew she was in the crowd. Then someone screamed, Oh my God, it's Oprah. They shot Oprah. After that, you couldn't walk down the street any place in America without seeing a Dennis Kucinich button or arm. It's very disturbing to see that the dreams that we've had for America, everything we've ever hoped for and believed in, just being dashed by an administration that has abused power, that has taken us into a profoundly uh, anti-democratic course. At this point, the government became really frightened. Something had to be done about Kucinich. People had begun to listen to his revolutionary ideas. They killed him, of course. But what they couldn't understand was that uh, he wasn't the movement. He was the wake-up call. We mourned. It was a terrible loss. I mean, for a few days, the country shut down. But we all got up off the floor, and we went back to work. By that time, we were ready to die. We occupied every building in Washington. <laughs> and it wasn't clean, it wasn't simple, we argued. A lot of people quit. And a few got hurt. But eventually, we got real significant changes. Department of Peace, universal health care, and a tough new fairness doctrine for our media. That's how democracy happens. 30 years after Dennis Kucinich and the Pax Americana, we live in a transformed world. Fewer wars, less poverty, more time for community. It took a revolution to remind us of what Native Americans knew a thousand years ago. Now the question is, can we hold on to what we have learned? We planted this liberty tree here to remember what happened. 
There's thousands more just like it in cities all over America. We won't forget. I know that every one of us sitting here could be any one of us, could be up on the stage giving the same speech because we all feel it. This is what brings us here. This is what unites us. I mean, how many people over the last three, four years have had this feeling like, I can't believe this is happening in America. What is happening doesn't represent who we are.